Hey guys, today I'm doing a video I've been wanting to do for a while and thinking about doing for a while and I know it won't have a lot of direct relevance to many of you but I do hope you stick around and watch it because I think it's always good to get a sense of you know what our fellow pilgrims may go through on the Camino and things that they may be thinking about that you aren't thinking about. So today I'm specifically, I'm wearing my quality shirt and I'm going to talk about the LGBT experience on the Camino de Santiago Frances. Obviously, I can only speak about my experience. I can't speak about others' experiences, but especially for, um, you know, LGBT people and women who want to walk it alone, which is what I did, hopefully this will help allay any fears you may have and answer any questions you may have. So, um, yes, I, you know, I'm, as I've mentioned in a video before, I'm engaged to a woman. I proudly identify as LGBT. I've talked about this more or less in some other videos, um, but you know, that's not like a defining feature of who I am, but it's also not something that at this point, I'm 34 years old, that I hide in my life. I was single when I walked the Camino, so it's not like it came up in the same way it would now that I'm getting married, but I certainly, when I was in conversations with people, if it came up, um, you know, I gauged who I was talking to, but in general, it was something that I was totally free, I felt totally free sharing. So first of all, uh, you know, I walked the Camino with this big rainbow flag on my pack the whole time and anyone who's behind me could see it and so maybe they they wondered or maybe they just thought I was an ally and whatever the case may be is great with me. But I think what's interesting um, for Americans especially is that in general, people are a lot more open-minded in Europe and that has several meanings. So open-minded in terms of accepting, you know, same-sex um, couples and, and marriages and everything like that. Um, Spain has had recognized same-sex marriage since 2005, one of the first countries in Europe and the world to do so. Um, but it also is just more of like a, from a stereotype standpoint, right? So it's funny because I feel like fashion and haircuts and things like that can often dictate the reactions that the LGBT community can receive from those outside the community. So you see a woman who's maybe like muscular with really short hair and you assume, oh, she must be gay or you see a man with um, really tight pants and a fanny pack, at least here in the States and you say, oh, maybe he's gay, but that doesn't apply in Europe. I mean, people feel comfortable to wear hairstyles, fashion of any type, regardless of their sexual orientation. And that's one of the things I love. So just off the bat, if you're used to presenting in a way that people assume is gay, um, you may not experience that in Europe. And and if you're hoping that people, you know, sometimes we, we want people to know off the bat so it saves an awkward conversation, they're probably a lot less likely to assume than an American would be. So that's an interesting observation, I think. Um, the other thing is Spain. So I've lived in Spain multiple times. I lived in Spain back before I dated women, when I was young, I had longer, blonder hair. Um, and I do feel safe to say that there, you know, I don't know if I can say it's still a macho culture, but there certainly are elements of machoism that you'll see, um, but I don't find it to be really any different than anywhere else in the world. In fact, all this, every Spanish man really that I encountered was super nice. I never felt uncomfortable, unsafe, um, really throughout my time in Spain. So, you know, while there may be, if there is a man who's interested in you as a woman, um, maybe there would be a little bit of, I don't know, like, feistiness I'm not sure what word to use but I didn't I never experienced that and so I think um, again you just have to kind of know how to gauge the conversation that you're in if you feel uncomfortable and if you feel like you want to say my husband my boyfriend my girlfriend whatever you want to say you know I would never never fault anyone for covering like that your safety comes first but I never felt unsafe um, and I was really open so, you know, I think, um, I, it, you know, I don't know this experience, I guess I should have prefaced this. This is really more for the, I guess, the LG and B of the, of the spectrum. I, I didn't meet any transgender people or people that were open about being transgender on the Camino. 
And I don't know if that is, I'm not sure kind of the level of acceptance of that in uh, in Spain. I could see it presenting maybe some issues with respect to albergues that have um, single gender rooms. So my best advice would be to probably um, do as much research as you can on albergues, post questions in the forums um, about if certain places are mixed gender or not, and uh, maybe stay only in the places that are mixed gender just to not have any issues. Um, you know, bathrooms may present another issue. I think these are probably things that are starting to evolve on the Camino. So I do apologize for not having more kind of insight into that. Um, but, you know, I, I would hope that in a place as accepting and as tolerant as the Camino, that everyone on the spectrum is accepted. And again, I want to reiterate, the people I met that had the kind of the, they were the most closed-minded and maybe like zealously religious to the point where they don't, they might not be accepting were actually the Americans. Interesting. So, um, you know, I will say that I did not meet any other, I, I think I, my first night at Horizon, I think there was one um, older lesbian couple. I did not meet a gay man, a man who was openly gay um, on the Camino. And I think, you know, maybe a couple other younger women that it came up, maybe they were bi or, or just free, you know, free thinking, whatever the case may be. So I would say the representation is still pretty small, um, at least in terms of people who are open about it. So go in being prepared to do what you wanna do. Either you can blend in, you can speak out. I love being open about who I am because I think it gives people a chance to really, um, you know, to learn. A lot of people still maybe have never been close with a person who identifies as LGBT and I'm an open book. I will happily answer questions that aren't, you know, super intrusive. Um, so just know though that you're, you'll definitely be in the minority. Um, so kind of think about that going in and you don't have to make up a strategy now, but just maybe think about how you might respond in certain situations. Um, uh, cause people are going to be interested. They're going to ask you questions and it's not really prying. I think people really just want to get to know other people on the Camino. Um, looking at my notes seeing if I have forgotten anything else. Ah, yeah. I think if you want to feel a little bit more comfortable, I highly recommend having part of your walk, at least be in the month of June. Um, it's Pride Month. I saw a huge Pride flag uh, draped over the city hall in Viana, which is the city before Logroño. That was really exciting. Um, I saw posters everywhere about Pride Month. There was a Pride celebration going on. I was in Pamplona on a Saturday night, so there was a Pride celebration going on there. I mean, that could even be a fun way to kind of structure your Camino dates and stops is check out when Pride is happening in the cities you're going to be going through or the towns. And, uh, you know, I went and I there was a group of girls dancing and started chatting with them, went out to a club with them. Uh, none of them were LGBT, but they were, you know, their party there to show their um, support and acceptance. And so June is a pretty fun month to be there. And I think it might, you know, help you feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, and I guess, if, you know, I, I, regarding, I've touched on this a little bit about, so I, should you, should, is this something you should talk about? And I just think you have to figure out what's authentic to you and your Camino and don't stress about it. I think if you get in a situation where you say, you know what, dang it, I wish I had brought this up and I didn't, you'll probably see that person again, or you'll have another opportunity to educate another person or to talk about yourself openly with another person. So um, don't be nervous. Obviously keep your wits about you, be authentic to yourself. And you know, being LGBT, I think, only enhanced my Camino. So I hope you guys have wonderful experiences and you feel encouraged to still go do it. And as always, let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to, you know, if you if there's a way that we can have a private conversation, if you have questions you don't really want to post, um, reach out and, and I'm always here to help you guys. Uh, and please, as always, have a very buen Camino.